Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insight through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Ashley Crouch, who is a visibility strategist, investor, philanthropist, international best-selling author of the book, Unknown to Unforgettable, award-winning publicity strategist and founder of Appleseed Communications, the creator of Prowess Podcast, keynote speaker, and founder of the Seed Fund Project. Oh my goodness. We have (laughs) so much to get into here and jump into this conversation. So welcome. Welcome, Ashley. (laughs) Thank you for having me, Summer. It's really an honor to be here. Absolutely. I'm so excited. So before we dive into your professional background, I want to ask you, describe your journey thus far in one word. My journey has been expansive. (laughs) That's really the word that governs my life. And when I think back over now, I feel like I've lived multiple chapters of life. But when I think back to the beginning, I never would have anticipated being where I'm at now. And I don't think anyone else would have either. (laughs) It was just, um, I grew up in a lots of brothers and sisters and uh, my dad had built a business and I, I would go to work with him. And I don't think he realized he was actually grooming me to be an entrepreneur, watching him answer phone calls, go out to client meetings and going to work with him was just the highlight of the week to have my own little desk and my own little pen pad and, you know, take notes while he was out for him. I felt so important, but he actually retired. And when I was 12 and we moved to a farm in Arkansas. So wow. it was a big change to go from city life and going to work with dad and going to school and all the things to farm life. And we had a hundred chickens and a donkey and horses. And it was really, you know, the hobby farm and I couldn't see my neighbors. And so from that growing up in high school, that environment to going to college and being the first in my family that I knew of at the time that graduated from college for women, then now kind of step by step thinking about how can I grow? How can I experience more? How can I cultivate more skills and just constantly moving toward that expansion step by step? And here we are today. Wow. That is incredible. So many interesting transitions throughout your journey. (laughs) So going from city life to rural farm life, that must have been huge for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least you've got that foundation too of being in those different environments, transitioning, how that looked for you, how you transitioned, but also being exposed very early to entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. and what that looked like. I love that. And it's so funny because My grandfather, he was an entrepreneur. He ran a potting soil business that was an international potting soil business. I love it. But here's the funny thing. He purchased a ranch and they started out selling chickens, like (laughs) raising chickens. Wow. Yeah, right? So something similar. And so he had thousands of chickens on this Mm -hmm. ranch. And it's funny how what we're exposed to, what's modeled for us really impacts our life journey, right? And that's why... I love what you said, but he realized that those chickens weren't exactly what he envisioned. He didn't want that. And so Mm -hmm. he also learned about what he could do with the chicken feces, right? And Mm -hmm. donate that to like the mushroom factories and such. Mm -hmm. What he ended up doing is taking that stuff from the mushroom factories and putting it into soil and which enriched the soil. Mm -hmm. That's how he developed his potting soil business. So it's interesting foundationally how your journey started and where it's progressed with that expansiveness, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I love that. So let's talk a bit more about this journey, such as you talked about where you grew up, what led you to these incredible professional interests, but let's talk a bit more about these interests that have developed over the years, such as being an Mm -hmm. investor, your Mm -hmm. business, 
Appleseed Communications and the Seed Fund Project and your mission for this organization. So let's mm-hmm. talk about those aspects of your journey as well. Mm-hmm, for sure. So yeah, and I love your, I love that story that you shared. Yeah. Growing up on the farm, it really did shape me because I was in private school. I actually had more of a tutor at that point. And so there wasn't a whole lot of structure that a lot of kids grew up with in terms of classes and athletics and set schedules. You got your 8 a.m. hour, your 9 9 a.m. hour, what have you. It was up to me to create. It was really like a blank slate, a blank canvas. And I really appreciate those years, one, because it gave me appreciation for nature and for cultivation and giving back to community. But it also, once I got out of college and started my professional journey, it really highlighted to me the importance of being a self-starter and being someone who follows through and really creating something out of nothing. And starting this business now, Appleseed, it grew out of you know, I actually wound up moving to New York City. I wanted a completely new change. I did not want to have farm life anymore. So I moved to Manhattan. <laughs> that was like the ultimate wow. culture shock. <laughs> and, yes. Uh, moved to Manhattan. <laughs> I felt like I was living my dream, you know, getting involved in the fashion industry and being creative. And it was by all intents and purposes, just a dream come true. And then I realized, Manhattan is expensive. Things are, you know, this is, it's not a cakewalk to live in this town. And so I realized that I needed to find a way to contribute value in the marketplace and to do that by creating solutions. And so the, the skill set that I had built working in the fashion industry was uh, PR and talking to people and really casting a vision and telling the story of the company and getting attention from the media, from the writers, from the TV producers and It was enormously rewarding because it was a way to cast a vision for really a better world. I was working for a fashion magazine at the time that was the first no Photoshop fashion magazine to exist. This was back in 2010, 2011. And it was right at that dawn where people started to realize that we don't just need to have Photoshop. We actually need to have size inclusivity and celebrate the best of who women are and the multi- faceted and diverse ways that women show up in the world. And it was really, really rewarding to be a part of that movement and to help shape it in some way through storytelling and the and how passionate I was about that. And then I realized, well, actually, this is a skill set and I have to find a way to contribute value in Manhattan on a bigger scale. So following expansion, I just wanted to step out and not just get a job at a PR agency per se or or be a senior account manager, which I could have done but to be able to have the autonomy to work on projects that I feel really advance society and move the culture forward and move the planet forward and provides a solutions that I'm passionate about. And I wanted to do that at a broader scale. So I didn't really know much about how to start a business besides what I had learned, <laughs> kind of watching people and, and uh, going to work with my dad when I was little. But yeah. step by step, again, I, I launched the company and just started learning, attending events, asking questions, taking lunch meetings. And the company is now in its ninth year as of this month. And now we have global clientele around the world. But what I've learned through the process is that business, and especially business for women, is one of the most powerful vehicles for rewiring our financial blueprint, our generational blueprint, but also society and the world at large in the way that we show up and we contribute solutions, the clients that we work with, the projects that we advance. I feel it's the most powerful vehicle that we have. And it's made me so convicted that if there's a way that more women could launch businesses to support not only their immediate families, but also all the families that they impact through their job creation or the clients that they serve or our seed fund project now with our micro lending program. It's really captured (laughs) every fiber of my being and I'm just enormously passionate about it. Wow. Okay. Tell me more about this micro lending. What is this all about? Sure. So in year probably three of business, um, we were supporting a lot of female founders and and we would provide publicity strategy to help female founders to get notice in the media, to generate more attention and to hopefully attract more investors. And so I felt that just by virtue of what we were doing, providing the service, we were having a social impact. 
But I was really drawn to these companies like the Patagonias or Warby Parkers or Tom's Shoes, you know, these companies that were going that extra mile and taking that extra step to allocate resources from their clients or their revenue stream, whether that could be top line revenue or some did one for one models. But I loved how people went that extra step in their companies to create a social impact and sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so I started sitting down and thinking, what could be the way that we could do that? Because it felt meaningful already with the projects we were working on and helping the female founders. But there was, I think this idea was tossed out. Like, what if you could be a one-for-one -one founder somehow? And all of a sudden I was like, oh, that could actually work. So now what we do is, you know, the company's named Appleseed. And the idea behind that was that we plant seeds in the media that help you grow. And so kind of like Johnny Appleseed, mm -hmm. the inspiration for it. And then I thought, well, for every client we serve, if we allocate a micro loan to another woman entrepreneur to grow their business, then that would be like the seed fund project. And so we started doing that right away. And I partnered with Kiva, which is a wonderful international micro lending platform. And the reason why I love them is that they have people on the ground in the local ecosystems with the women that need it the most, mm. actually fielding the interviews, receiving the applications, and thoroughly understanding the intricacy of that business so that they can say, okay, this person also needs mentorship to make sure that the micro loan is sustainable and that they get the benefit from the funds. Or this person doesn't need so much infrastructure around them because the business is already however many years old, they're more autonomous, but you as the lender get to select your beneficiaries based on their rating protocol. So I was like, oh, it takes the guesswork out of me going to Tanzania or trying to build out the ecosystem on my own in yeah. Kenya or in Nicaragua. And so I decided to partner with them. So now this has been, the partnership has been about six years going now. And we have supported women in 25 countries Fantastic. and they are in a full range of business types. Some are in cosmetology, some are in tailoring, some are in agriculture. And in those 25 countries, the women have been paying back their loans. They're just doing, they're just doing amazing. Out of all the women that we've supported, there's only like a 3% or less default rate, which is unheard of. And then what it has created is a for purpose profit cycle where we are generating revenue that supports the business and our staff and our clients, but then also supporting the secondary ecosystem, which has gotten quite robust at this point. And then they're creating their ecosystems, which support their kids going to school or um, graduating from college. I mean, it's incredible what they're doing. So, yeah, it's, it's incredible what you're doing. Oh, thank you. And build community and bring community together and giving back in a way that you're planting more seeds all over the world to grow. Mm. These seeds mm. are the women that are thriving not just surviving, but now are thriving and are able to thrive. Yes. Their families. And then also pass that forward. Yes. So I <laughs> love it. Oh my oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> You're doing amazingly. And this started by some modeling, by what you were exposed to in regards to that early entrepreneurship, even that move to Arkansas and how you became more grounded in who you are, being intentional, and really learning how to thrive. And then you took yourself to New York City. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a culture shock. <laughs> so, but you did it, right? Mm -hmm. You did it. And you exposed yourself to all these really unique and interesting experiences where you learned there too. And then you brought that all forward and combined that with your passion. And here you are today. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the next thing that you've done. And that is your book unknown to unforgettable, an international bestseller. Tell us about this book. Yes. Well, this had been, this had been really a dream on my heart to write a book, to be an author for years. And it took me seven years to write the book summer because of fear. 
not because I didn't know what I was talking about, because I was doing the work and contributing and doing publicity strategy and uh, really helping people around the world. But it was this fear that came from a lot of identity work that I had to do. So this is another theme around expansion is that, yes, we have our early childhood experiences. We have all of the labels that people bestow upon us or the labels that we give ourselves and what we think we are and who we can be and what we can do. And I know you'll relate to this because of your own journey too and, and all the wonderful things you've accomplished. But at a certain point, I reached a ceiling. I didn't see myself as an author in my identity. So even though I wanted to be an author, it felt completely out of reach. And I put my own blocks up around how to even put words on a page. Even though I wrote copy for clients all day <laughs> and I've written for so many media outlets, but for some reason, being an author was like a block. So for seven years, I didn't write this book, but what I did do and what I hope some people can receive value from is I started doing a lot of affirmation work and a lot of identity work around who I am and the type of company that I run and that I'm an author, that I'm a best-selling author. Yeah. And so I started doing these affirmations years before the book ever came to be. And then at one point, I think through the finally rewiring the neural pathways, my identity clicked into place and I wrote the book in two weeks. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yes. And what it was meant to do was provide people with a tool that anybody could take and read and use and get results right away, even if they couldn't work with my company or work with us or, you know, afford a PR agency of their own, but they could use this signature system that I was using, being self-taught, never having the formal education, just only knowing what got results, what was working today in the world and writing that protocol down. And people were using that and they were getting results. If they had self-published their book, they were getting featured in speaking events and breakfast meetings with chamber of commerce or luncheons or masterminds. And they were able to elevate their stories just by using these techniques. So the book was meant to be a tool to reach more and more people with that methodology. And it was Again, just setting the intention. I want this to be an international bestseller. One, for the credibility, of course, but also for the impact and the ability to reach as many people as possible. So that book, we don't even really make money on it. It's meant to be really a free gift. So we just offer it for free. Anybody can use it as a, as a tool right now. And if they go to unknown to unforgettable.com, all you have to do is pay for shipping and it gets out straight away to you. And then using that, most of the clients that we have don't come from the readers of the book. The, so many people read the book and never become a client. They just use the techniques and they get results for themselves. But sometimes every once in a while they say, okay, we want additional support. We want a custom strategy or what have you. So then we can support them in that way. But at least this way, I know, again, it's, it's a way for me to reach as many people as possible and expand in my level of contribution. So yeah, hopefully somebody could read it and, and hop over and grab it if they want, and then use it for 2023, because I truly believe right now in the way that the world's going, no one can predict what's going to happen. No one can predict exactly when the recession's going to hit or if it's going to hit what black swan event may occur or not occur. But what we can control is the way that we are showing up to provide solutions. And as many people that know about those solutions as possible, hear about us. So I was listening to a podcast interview with Warren Buffett recently, and he was saying during times of crisis or recession, you need to position yourself for success. And the number one thing you need to do is have a business. If you can, if you can have a business that you can control and run for yourself and also be the best you can be in that industry and that people know about you, that you are the go-to leader. And so I see this as a mission on my side that if I have this skill set that I can impart to people and give you those tools that you can take and use this year and, and in coming years, then it's going to make all the difference in the world, I believe, in how people can get through these times and really thrive. I absolutely love it. I love the language that you're using here from the beginning of this interview regarding being solution focused or helping others being solution focused or helping them support their solutions 
to giving practical, applicable tools through your book. So important. Mm -hmm. Those first steps, giving back to community, supporting community, how money is being utilized here and how that is helping community. And it's working in community, helping Mm -hmm. others thrive. So Mm -hmm. all of these different aspects of business, of community building that you talk about, so important. So another question, you have a podcast, the Prowess Podcast. Tell us about that. Oh, thank you. Well, what you've created with this podcast is just tremendous and helps so many people. And you ask the best questions. I know I'm veering all over the place here. <laughs> Normally I'm the one asking the questions. So I'm like, oh, wow, this is a new skill set for me to work on and learn. But for my podcast, I wanted to interview leaders in industry that could flip the script. And I think we have a similar passion around helping women be heard. Yeah. And I realized at a certain point, almost all the podcasts that I listen to with CEOs or thought leaders that were at a certain stage of business growth that I wanted to learn from were men. And then I realized that almost all of their guests were also men. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I was beginning to run my business with the thought processes and mechanisms that are traditionally understood to be male. And what I wanted to do was not only run a successful company, but also learn from and showcase the women I knew in private conversations, in masterminds, or in, you know, colleagues that were tremendously insightful and had a wealth of wisdom whether that's being on the board of Amnesty International and being a true leader for philanthropy and really understanding how to make a career in that sector or starting a unicorn company in consumer goods or beverage. I mean, product, that's a complete different sector that I wanted to learn about. So not only did I do it selfishly for my own (laughs) benefit to learn from the guests, but also to showcase how amazing they are. So it's called Prowess, Stories of Leaders Who Have an Edge. And I do interview, of course, some men as well. But Mm -hmm. more often than not, I like to showcase women in order to counteract and to bring balance to the voices that we hear from in business and give people role models that they can follow and take some insight, maybe not the whole conversation, but one nugget. Mm -hmm. What can you take from that conversation? One nugget you can use, one nugget you can implement, one thought process that's different that you can adopt and start to see the benefits in your own life. So it's been tremendously rewarding to do that. And, and I'm sure for you as well, all the conversations you've had, wow, it just must be so powerful for you to have this podcast. I love this podcast. It's a way of creating a space, a safe space for the voices of women and for them to be able to tell their story, their journey, both personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. And as you said, and I've talked to many women on this podcast, as well as from around the world. And many of their stories are, I was reading a book. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast. I was watching a TV show. And it was that one sentence, that one word that impacted my life so much that I made a change. I made a change in my journey and I was able to be intentional about that. And that's what this is all about is the stories that women tell that They're impacting people in community across the world. And I hear about it all the time saying, I listen to this story and wow, Mm -hmm. I can take something away from it. And I did. And this is what I took away. And I'm thinking, yes, stories are so impactful. They're so important. And they also, just like you are sharing with us today, Ashley, are giving those practical tips and applications where women can go and do A, B, or C because now they have some tips that they can use 
And so these podcasts also provide that to other women and men. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I've been asked, hey, can you create a core, core men <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. podcast? And I said, you know, what I'll do is I'll create another space. And that's exactly what I did. I created a live show on Instagram to bring men and women to the table, to that mm-hmm. space. So to have these conversations. So thank you so much for sharing your journey, all that you've done, all these wonderful things you're doing in community. So as we come to the close of our interview, my last question is, if you were to leave the listeners with some words of wisdom, what would they be? I would just speak from my heart and tell you, it's not about where you start. It's about where you end up. And that's probably not an original idea, but it's been so true in my own life that you have every ability within you to continue to cultivate yourself and you get to choose where you wind up and only you know where that's going to be. No one else can see the vision that you have, the dreams that you have, the drive that you have, or your ability to follow through and keep taking those steps one after another. So I always say two things. One is dream as big as you dare because that's what's going to set the benchmark that you're aiming for. And the second thing is practice makes progress and progress is the point. So if you can just keep moving, you are well on your way. Well, thank you, Ashley, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today and for those words of wisdom. Thank you for having me, Summer. Absolutely. You can follow Ashley Crouch on LinkedIn, Ash Crouch one on Instagram and Twitter, the real Ashley Crouch on Facebook and appleseedcommunications.co. You can also find her book, Unknown to Unforgettable on Amazon. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great. Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.